Welcome to the movie tour. My name is Vic. I will be your tour guide through the world of The Emperor's New Groove. Do keep in mind that this tour has definite spoilers on it. And did you know that there are several hidden llamas throughout The Emperor's New Groove? In fact, there's a lot of hidden Mickeys as well. So grab your poison specifically chosen for Cusco, get on your walking shoes, and come with me on an adventure because we're going to go find all of them. Let's go! Woo! The Emperor's New Groove was released on December 15th in the year 2000. With an estimated budget of $100 million, the film only made $169 million worldwide. Our movie begins with a sad Cusco, and then it goes back in time a bit to see how he got there. Our first hidden llama shows up right here. Can you spot it? Yep, it's a rocking llama. You can also see in this shot a bird and a whale, which are other animals that Cusco will turn into by the end of the movie. <laughs> I love me some foreshadowing. Next, we get a golden llama comb. In fact, let's get a golden llama counter on this screen. It's time to track this count. By the way, did you know that the movie was originally titled Kingdom of the Sun? It also turns out that the film was originally going to be done on a much bigger scale, filled with much more music and magic. The idea was going to be that Pacha would look a lot like the Emperor, and it would have been very similar to Mark Twain's Prince and the Popper, where the peasant and the Emperor would switch places. The idea, however, tested poorly and had to be completely overhauled. The Spoiled Cusco does a song and dance number called Perfect World, and it's performed by Tom Jones. Cusco is played by David Spade, and I think it's a good thing. I know Disney is trying to be more inclusive by making the voice actors that they choose fit the characters based on their race or their ethnicity, but I just don't think that a real llama voicing the character would have worked well. During the song is where we find our first six hidden Mickeys. They're hidden on each plate of food that's being given to the Emperor. A lot of the music in this film was actually written by Sting, the frontman of the band The Police. He had to write and rewrite songs as the film had massive changes to the story over the course of its production. And there's actually a documentary out there called The Sweatbox that was made by Sting's wife, Trudy Styler. This documentary does a deep dive into the making of the film, the music, the story, and so much more. It's an interesting watch. We meet Pacha, played by John Goodman, who's also voiced another Disney character that you may know, James P. Sullivan in Monsters, Inc. Pacha is a llama herder and he's on his way to meet the Emperor. We also meet Yzma, voiced by Eartha Kitt of Catwoman fame in the 1960s Batman. This is a comical callback since Yzma actually turns into a cat later in the film. Next we meet the best character of the film and that's going to be Kronk, played by Patrick Warburton, aka Joe Swanson, aka The Tick, aka Jeff Bingham in the show Rules of Engagement that also stars David Spade himself. That show is fantastic, by the way. You get to see Cusco and Kronk goof off for seven seasons. If you haven't seen it, you're missing out on comedy greatness. Cusco fires Yzma and meets with Pacha. He tells him that he's going to build his summer home on his hilltop and he's going to destroy his whole town to make it happen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the movie tour pit stop where I test your knowledge of the film with some movie trivia. In this scene, Cusco tells Pacha that he's going to make his little town thingy go bye-bye in order to make way for his new summer home, which he calls what? Is it A, Cusco Land, B, Cusco-topia, C, Cusco World, or D, Cusco City? Lock in your answers down below and we'll revisit the pit stop at the end of the tour. We see how angry Yzma is for being fired and she begins to formulate a plan to kill Cusco so she could take over the throne. She invites him for dinner to poison him, but Kronk messes up the drinks and has to poison all three of the cups. So Yzma has to dump her drink into a nearby cactus. Take note of that cactus's shape, by the way. When Cusco drinks his poison, he turns into a llama. And in one of the next shots, the cactus turns into a llama shape as well. Kronk has to take him out of town to finish the job. And in this scene, Warburton actually improvises his own theme music. And I think it's just perfect. The Disney legal team actually had to have Warburton sign all of his rights to his humming composition over to them so that way they could actually use it in the film. Um, what's with the chimp and the bug? Can we get back to me? Thanks, that, that was weird. That was actually a subtle reference to Citizen Kane, where in the opening scene you actually see a pair of monkeys eating some bugs. Kronk drops Cusco and the llama falls into Pacha's wagon. Now there's a couple of real llamas in the shot, but I won't count the real ones, that's just too easy. Although, look at this llama, he just looks so happy. <laughs> what the heck, he can be on the count. I mean, why not? Pacha arrives home and we meet his two kids and his pregnant wife, Chicha. This is actually the first time in a Disney animated film to show a pregnant woman. 
true story. There appears to be a llama toy on the ground here, and when Pacha is standing in the doorway, there's a llama carved into the wood. Boom, baby! Sorry, I just get so excited when hidden llamas are found. Pacha goes to put Misty, his llama, away when Cusco literally stops the movie to remind us that the film is about him and not about Pacha. This is one of the funniest, most meta jokes ever. Pacha opens the bag on his wagon to find Cusco. By the way, Cusco was named after an Incan capital in Peru that can be found in the Andes Mountains. The setting of this movie is actually in Peru as well, but there's no exact year that it might have taken place. Disney never really tells us. It's just assumed to be around the 14th or 15th century. The llama starts his journey and Pacha has to save him due to an encounter with a squirrel who blows up a balloon llama. It's not really hidden, but we'll count it. When the squirrel pops the balloon, Cusco yells, and that causes him to get attacked by a bunch of jaguars. Now in the process of being saved, they get tied to a tree branch and they go over a waterfall. And then Pacha tries to kiss the llama. For the last time, it was not a kiss. Sure, Pacha, it wasn't a kiss. When Pacha is trying to make a fire, we see a hidden Mickey within the smoke. Yzma and Kronk throw a funeral for Cusco, and then she steps in as the new emperor. Now in an earlier draft of the film, Yzma actually sings a version of Perfect World where she talks about running the kingdom. I'll be the sovereign queen of the nation. I'm the chickest chick in creation. I'm the cat with all the cream and ooh la la. Kronk admits to Yzma that Cusco is not actually dead and now they have to go and find him and finish the job. Tipo awakens from a nightmare and in the shot we can find not one but three toy llamas. Cusco tells Pacha that he'll find a new hilltop for his home, so that way Pacha agrees to bring him back to the palace. They go to shake hands and in the background is a bunch of berries in the shape of a hidden Mickey. They get about an hour away from the palace as they cross a bridge. Pacha falls through the wood and Cusco goes back on his deal saying he only told him what he wanted to hear so that way he can get back to the kingdom. But after this admission, Cusco falls through too and we get a silly fight between the two until they both fall to their near death. As the rocks fall to the water, we get ripples in the water that make the shape of a Mickey. The two have to work together to get back to the top of the cliff and in the process, Cusco saves Pacha's life before he could fall in again. Without that bridge, they now have a four day hike to get to the palace and Pacha agrees to take him in hopes that he changes his mind about his summer home in that time. Pacha and the llama go to Mudka's Meat Hut and guess what's on the table at the restaurant? There are salt and pepper shakers that look exactly like llamas. Yzma and Kronk have so many close calls in and out of the kitchen with Cusco. I'm not sure how Cusco doesn't even recognize Kronk here though. He sees him like a dozen times and then he looks directly at Yzma and he doesn't recognize her. Mickey show up in her hat's pom-pom thingies. Hey look, Kronk's leftovers are in the shape of a llama. The duo decide to stop back at the house to get some supplies, but on the way they find out that Yzma and Kronk are there. Look at the shot, there's so many llamas here. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whoa, we hit the llama load. Pacha fills in his wife so that she can stall them so her husband and the llama can get a head start. And Chicha hits Cusco, causing four more llamas to float above his head. As the kids kick Yzma out, we see a llama on the ground outside the front door. We get a very meta chase sequence where they actually see their own trails showing up behind them until they are struck by lightning and they fall. When they get to the kingdom, they enter Yzma's lab and she is there already. They beat them and I love how they point it out that it makes no sense. How did we, Kronk? Well, you got me. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. And the search for the human potion begins. Hey look, there's all the llama potions. With only two vials left, Yzma gets turned into a cat. Mark Dindle, the director, was actually uncredited, but he voiced Yzma when she turns into the cat. Looking for this. Is that my voice? Is that my voice? So the cat and the llama fight it out for the vial, and in the end, Cusco wins. He takes the potion, and he becomes human again. The emperor then agrees to build his summer home on a neighboring hill, and now the duo become neighbors. We get a llama on Cusco's new poncho, and Kronk teaches a squirrel language class. And then the movie ends there. Did you eat the acorn? Squeaker, squeak, squeak, squeaking. Let's get back to our movie tour pit stop. What does Cusco call his summer getaway? Is it A, Cusco Land, B, Cuscotopia, C, Cusco World, or D, Cusco City? Now I just needed an insider's opinion before I okayed this spot for my pool. Uh, your pool? Booyah! 
Welcome to Cusco Topia, my ultimate summer getaway, complete with water slide. Did you get it right? If you did, I want you to like the video. Let's look at our counters. It looks like we found 10 hidden Mickeys and 28 hidden llamas. Wow, what an adventure. If you think I may have missed one, please let me know down below in the comments. Squeaker squeak, squeakin', squeak squeak, squeaking, squeakers, squeaker, squeakin', squeakers, squeakin'. Squeakin'.